Hi, it's Max, one of the designers of Lords of Baseball. And in this video, I'm gonna do a not so quick playthrough of one year of what Lords of Baseball plays like, what it looks like on the table with our test copy. This is not the final printing, all right? It is just a sample, uh, but it's really cool. It's been really cool to actually see the, the game's actual components and to do a, a playthrough video for you. I want to do the whole Rodney spin the box thing, but this box is, it's massive. So here we go. Hey, hey two hands, but don't they teach you to use two hands in the outfield in baseball? They did for me. Check us out. Let's go to the table. And here we are. Lords of Baseball on the table right there. And we're set up really just for a one player game. The last time I did a playthrough video like this, I did a two player game. I did a, a New York and a Boston team, but I'm, I'm just going to focus on, you know, the, the, the rules and, and things like that. I don't want this to seem like it's a strategy video at all. Uh, I want to let you know that of, of all the, of all the people to do a strategy video on this game, I'm probably the least qualified. I, I think in my 500 or so play tests and plays, I think I've won this game like twice. So as far as strategy goes, that's, that's for you to explore. But um, I have everything set up already. I drew, I drew the franchise for Matteo Di Sabella right here. And his franchise says we start with a two-star front office, a two-star farm system, and a three-star manager. Up here in our team level section, see these are all numbered one, two, three, four, five. So for front office, farm system, they're both rated two stars. So we can get that in focus. And then our manager, is rated a three star. So all we're gonna do is we're gonna take the cubes that come with the game and we're gonna mark two, two, three. We work our way down our organization roster. We have three stars. So I drafted three Lords of Baseball star cards. And what you'll notice if we flip over that handsome devil. These are the salaries that associate with each of these superstars. So we have three stars, four regulars. So our regular section right here, we have the cube marking off four. And then we have seven prospects. Seven prospects is in this section right here. And I have three pieces of media influence at my disposal. And I have $26, just shown right there, which is gonna be marked on our money tracker right there. As you gain or, or lose money, just kind of track your money right there. Uh, the other piece of information that we're gonna notice is our base TQ. TQ is gonna stand for team quality. And quality will, it basically means how strong your roster is and how likely you are to win games, all right? We'll, we'll talk about how that works here as we go along. So this is, is set up. I have my scoring disc at zero. I have one fan on the fan tracker. And since I am basically doing this by myself, we have three additional stars available in the pool. And all of the other teams in the league are gonna be represented by non-player team tokens. So Washington, right now is the strongest of any team in the non-player team pool. They have a TQ of nine and they're gonna win 86 games because of that. So this does not come with the game that I'm aware of. So I, I just have some bingo chips laying around. So some of this, some of what you're gonna see is potentially in the game, that, that is not. That is my blinged out stuff. This blue die, because I'm the blue New York player. Uh, does not come with the game. This is what came in my set. So there's, you know, there's enough dice for everybody, uh, but they're not color coordinated to my knowledge. Uh, I will say at the onset, this is a test copy. So a lot of what you see uh, should be final, but there could be minor tweaks here and there. So do not look at this as a uh, set design. It is, I'd say 99%. There might be some things that have to get tweaked or shifted. Uh, nothing that I found is super major, but uh, I'm not going to focus on that. We're going to do a little bit of gameplay so you see what it's like. 
Uh, the other part of setup is your stadium, which is just a, uh, a separate tile from your team mat. So I, I put mine over to the right. And then we have a stack of four different types of stadium tiles. Our press box, concessions, field, and bleachers. And you can see on the, I have a glare, I'm sorry. I'm trying to get away from here. So you can see on the player's stadium mat where you're allowed to build. So for example, if I wanted to build a press box, I can build it in the upper tier because that's where the press box symbol is or you know, yellow. If I want to build a concession stand, it's anywhere on the bottom. I, I'm allowed to overbuild my level one, but what I usually tell people is, you know, don't overbuild something until you have to. Uh, the bleachers can go basically wherever there's the blue bleacher symbol. And then the field, obviously this is just one field. So we put the field in the middle. So to set up the, the game, you're gonna set all of these tiles up in, in order from two to eight. So each, you see in the upper right-hand corner, L3, L4, L5, L6, L7, L8. Uh, you'll do that for all four types. And with that, I believe my New York franchise is ready to play. Uh, we're gonna work off of the, the sequence and the worksheet that is, uh, is supplied with the game. Uh, we're gonna start the game in spring training. So the first thing we're gonna do in spring training is we're gonna draw a season bonus card. So if you were playing a three-year game, you would set three of these bonus cards aside and, and those would be the three you played with. Now I've seen in forums and in play tests, people have suggested that we flip over all of them at the same time. That's, that's something that's perfectly uh, viable. I think that's a, an interesting strategy to, to look at. Uh, the one thing that I will say thematically, you know, we're currently in this year's baseball season. I don't know what next year's baseball season is going to bring. Uh, but if you want to be able to look ahead, absolutely. I mean, it's, it's your game. You do you, right? Uh, but... When we flip over the, the bonus card for this season, it looks like we're going to be rewarding the highest field level. Now, the field level, what we're talking about is over here in our stadium, our field, currently our level is two. And in a multiplayer game, if, let's say I'm playing against a Boston player, if at the time when we score this card, if I have a level two stadium and the Boston player has a level one stadium, I would be, I would win this card. And based on where I was in the VP order, I would either score one, two, or three points. Uh, that's, that's the way all of these cards are scored, either one, two, or three points based on a goal. This year's public objective have the highest field level. Okay, so everybody goes into spring training knowing that. Uh, now we're going to draw our spring training cards. To draw your cards, it's kind of it's based on your farm system. So my farm system is a two. And unfortunately, I'm not going to get extra cards based on the strength of my farm system, but I am going to draw a minimum of three. So I'm going to come over here to my, my decks. And you have to, I, I'm going to apologize in advance. I'm shooting this. By hand, as you can tell, I don't have a, a cool studio like a lot of other streamers and content creators do. So I'm, I'm playing this game one-handed. I'm already at a disadvantage, so I apologize if for any shaky video. Uh, I have three cards for spring training. Now, if I wanted to, I can use my media influence. I could use these tokens to draw an extra card. See, after drawing, I can play a, a media token to draw another spring training card or another season or another hot stove card. The rule is you may only have a maximum of five cards. You can see that right there in the, in the play rate. So I can spend one or two media and get extra cards. Uh, just for our playthrough, I'm gonna keep with what we have and just kind of glance over here. I'll give you an idea of what the the options are on each card. 
At the top, uh, there's an upgrade option. So on this, I can turn a regular player into a star player. Uh, but on this card, I don't have that option. Uh, I can call up. So in the call up section, it's always talking about your prospects. So our prospects are in the minor leagues. They're in the farm system. So I can call up a prospect and, and that can become a regular player for me. I can make a trade. I can trade one of my star players and I can build up my farm system and get a couple bucks at the same time. The sign option, oh, I'm gonna go back to trade here real quick. The important thing with trade is, I, I refer to this as A and this is B. I can give A and get B, or I can give B and get A. So it, it works either way, that's what that symbol means. I can trade in either direction. With the call up and the sign, it's always give A, get B. Okay, so for signing, obviously I'm gonna pay $4 and I'll build up my prospects. And under fans, I don't have any, any option to increase my fan loyalty. I'm going to dig into the deck. Here we go. You can see sometimes you have an option that you can add a fan or add two fans. You would track that up on the fan track table. So I don't have that option in my spring training for, for this year. So I'm really gonna focus on either my team or my farm system. Now, before I get into this, um, before I do any of these cards, I'm, I'm gonna tell you really quickly about our team quality and, and how that works and why it's important uh, because a lot of the trades I make are gonna affect that. Your team quality is something you're going to compare to another team. So currently right now, we'll look at Washington. Their, their quality is a nine. My quality is a seven. So naturally they're two stronger than me. They're better than me by two. During the season, we're gonna play cards and the cards may impact my quality. The cards may impact my opponent's quality. And then we're gonna roll dice. So let's just say, for example, I'm playing against Washington and both of the cards that we played were, were money cards or they had nothing to do with our team quality. Then we're gonna roll dice. I'll say I'm blue. This is really bad for me because not only do it is Washington stronger than me, they rolled better than me. So now instead of being two stronger, they're six stronger, the two regularly and then five is four more than one. So the two, plus four is six, what would happen then is we would look at the records and Washington would win 14 games, I would win eight. In, in a solo game, playing here one player, I'm not gonna track Washington. Remember, Washington's gonna win 86 games, no matter what. I'm not gonna track 14 wins for them. I am gonna take my token though and move it to eight. And I'll play seven series. Now, how do you perform better? Well, first of all, you roll better than this. But, but second of all, I can try to build my team quality. To do that, your team quality is built on three things. The number of star players you have. Every star player gives you a team quality. Build up your regular players. Right now, I have four of them. That's worth one. Every three regulars gives you a bump in your quality. So, <coughs> excuse me, if I'm able to add two regulars somehow, my team quality will go from seven to eight because my regulars will go from four to six and you see how that's gonna move me up one. The other way that we can impact our team quality is through our manager. The manager goes one to five. Right now I have a three. So my, my seven, where that's coming from, so if we look at our, our base TQ here, where that seven came from, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. That's it, that's, that's all that's going into our team quality. Later on, if you build into your stadium, so like your field, for example, the ball symbol is team quality. So you can get a one, two, or three TQ bump by building up your field as well. Okay, so hopefully, you know, that's going to give you a, a, an idea here of, of what I'm doing. 
Uh, I will also say at the end of the regular season, you have to pay everybody. So right now, currently, uh, I have three superstar players. Their salary alone is $35. I am starting the game with $26. So I, I am going to gain money. I am going to have revenue before I have to pay my players. But these are things that you have to think about. And again, remember, I told you that this is not a strategy video because I'm not necessarily good at this game. Uh, but th those, those are conscious decisions you're going to have to make. Okay, so for spring training, um, I might actually, in, in the first year, I actually might try to down, downgrade my payroll so that I have some money to build a stadium. I'm only going to play through one year, but I'm going to play it with the intention of possibly playing a three or five year game. All right, so I might look at I'm going to look at this right here, and I'm I'm going to do a trade. I'm I'm going to trade away a star player, and and I'm going to take this wonderful looking guy, yep, and I'm going to trade him, and he's going to go back into the trade pool. And I'm going to gain two prospects and $4. So I'm going to move my prospects up there, and I gain $4. So I go from 26 to 30 That is this card. You get one option per card. So that card gets discarded. It's out of the game. If you were playing with multiple people, two, three, four, five, doesn't matter how many, it's your choice if you want to play one card at a time and go around the table, or if you just want to play all of your cards at once, or if you want to do this simultaneously. Uh, if you do it simultaneously, it's just expected that you announce, you know, this is what I did, and this is what my, my strength is at this point. Because I traded away a star, my quality goes down to six. Okay. Um, now, what I can do is I can upgrade, I can take one of these regulars, and that, that's actually interesting. <coughs> I, can, I can take a regular, and I wouldn't lose any quality for it, and I could make him a star. Um, and really, also all that did was just add two prospects uh, for nothing, but that's me saving $3, because if I wanted to get two prospects with this card, I'd have to pay $3. Hmm... I don't necessarily want to, I, I want to bump my prospect up one more and I don't want to lose too much more team quality. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to, I'm actually going to do the trade. I'm going to trade $1 for a prospect. So I'm essentially going to buy a prospect. So I'm going to go from 30 to 29 and I add a prospect. Now I have 10. 10 is a good number of prospects. You'll notice the the home plate symbol there. That's our symbol for victory points. Every five prospects is worth a point. So <clears throat> I got myself in a position that I have two points now. And with one more card, I will this is this is not the best card. Um, I don't want to take a prospect and make him a regular, that does me no good. Uh, I don't necessarily want to buy more prospects. Or do I, there are some cards, I'll tell you what, I'm gonna pay $3, I'm gonna pay the $3, and I'm gonna sign two more prospects. There are some cards in the regular season deck that allow me to do some prospect manipulation, so I have, I have two prospects that I can kind of mess around with during the season, so. That's, that's what I'll, I'll experiment with. So we have played all of our spring training cards, and we're going to set our team quality. The only thing that changed was I lost a star, so my quality dropped to a six. Uh, from there, we would, we would expose all of the other non-player teams, and you can see I've already set those up for us, so we're ready to go. And if we were playing a multiplayer game, everyone would announce what their strength is, but that's something that can change throughout gameplay, so it's, it's not really important that you do that. We are done with spring training. It is time for the regular season. Set schedule. 
So what set schedule means is we have a deck here. Our, we're going to play the Federal League. The other league is the Continental. So all, all these are, are there's seven cards that have our schedule on them. So we're going to flip over the first one. Oh, I'm sorry. Like I said, I'm, I'm sorry about the shaky camera work. I, I'm working one-handed. Um, the only game that we're, that we're concerned about is where New York is. And left versus right, home, away is meaningless. All, all we care about is which team we're playing. Uh, if we were playing an eight-player game, everybody finds their opponent, and this can be done simultaneously. Um, we have to figure out... We have to do a couple things before I worry about our games, but that's the way the schedule looks. The next thing we're going to do is we're going to draw some cards. And two, three, four, five, six, I get one more. You're going to get seven series cards. Seven series cards. And I'm going to lay these out. And give you a give you a look. Here we go. So here's my hand. I'm playing seven different series. I have seven cards. I am allowed to use a media cube to take an eighth card. However, during series play, I'm only allowed to play one card. All If I want to buy an eighth card, all that's doing is giving me an extra option. Like, oh man, this is not a really good card here. I, I could spend a media and get a new one. Uh, the, the rules do say, I believe, you're not allowed to look at your cards before you spend the media. So, like, once, you, once we look at them, we're kind of locked in. So, um, that's that. I'm not going to worry too much about what my cards are strategically, like I said. We're just going to go through some gameplay here. And what we're going to do now is play all of our matchups. So, where it says resolve matchups, this is what it looks like. You find your opponent. So, for us, it's going to be Detroit. We're going to compare our initial strength. So Detroit, as you can see, is a five. We are currently a six. So what that means is we are one stronger than Detroit. Now, I get to play a card, and the nice part about playing the non-player teams, they're not going to play a card. Had If Detroit was a, a human player, they would have a hand of cards, and they would be playing a card. Uh, but in, in our example, not the situation. So I'll, I'll show you, this is one of those, what we, I call an either or card. I can either do this at the top or this at the bottom. It says you and your series opponent may do something. Well, I don't have a series opponent that has money. So I'm going to focus on the bottom. It says if against non-player team, gain one TQ. So what that means is during this series only, only against Detroit, my TQ is now a seven. So instead of being six to five stronger, I'm seven to five stronger. So I, I'm naturally two stronger than Detroit. Then what we're gonna do is we're gonna roll the dice and I'm gonna say I'm blue. Look at that. I am now three stronger. One because of my natural strength, one because of my card, one because of my die. And if we go over here to our records, we can see that three difference gives me 13 wins. So we're gonna come up here and we're gonna mark 13 wins on the track. That's it, that's a series. So we do it again. And and this this is all simultaneous in an eight-player game, all of these games are going on at the same time, and it's just that quick. This series, we're gonna get Philadelphia. Philadelphia is a TQ of four, so right now my strength is, I'm two better than them, and what can I do? Oh, I'll do this. I'm just kind of just playing cards. I can purchase media, or I can just straight up gain money. Media, again, is, is a method to get cards. But the cool part about media as well, it's also basically a $5 bond that you can call in at any time. So five media is worth $25, but I can get it by spending 10. Well, that's a good deal, I think. So let's just spend $10.
and we're gonna get ourselves five media cubes. We're gonna dig in the media bowl here. One, two, three, four, five. And doing this kind of action against Philadelphia, again, I'm not gonna tell you strategy, but here's some strategy. Philadelphia is naturally weaker than me, so I don't think I need to really put too much of my effort into training the, training the team or you know getting them amped up. They could blow up in my face right here because now we're gonna roll dice. Again, I'm gonna be red. You know, let's let's do this. Philadelphia, Philadelphia's red. I'm gonna be blue. And oh boy, that's the kind of roll we like to see. Uh, like I said, I was naturally better by two. The roll gives me an additional five. So two plus five gives me seven. I'm going to win 15 games. 15 plus 13 is going to take me to 28. So I'm rounding the corner. Two series is in. And I have 28 wins, which is okay by me. Again, if we were playing with multiple people, they would track their wins as well. Uh, next series, we have Chicago. Now, Chicago is a little stronger than us. They are an eight. We are a six. So we're naturally down two. Well, what can I do? What can I do to help that? Huh. Well, I'll tell you what. We'll try this. Oh, no, I can't do that yet. I'm going to do this. Uh, we're, we, we can do the media thing again. Except now I'll show you. I can just gain $4. Because, well, you know what? No, I'm, I'm going to do, I might as well do it the smart way. So we're going to purchase five media again for $2 each. So we're down, we're now, we have now $6, but I have, what's the rest of the media? <laughs> the game comes with enough that, I mean, unless somebody is hogging 30 media influence tokens, uh, they're not, they're not a finite resource. I don't, I don't believe um, now that I say that, <laughs> I should really check. Um, I'm going to be cashing these in here in a little bit, though, so it, it's not going to matter for our little demo here. Uh, this is me saying I'm hoping I get a good die roll because I'm naturally down two. And Chicago will be the black die. I will be the blue die. Awesome. Look at that. So, and I'm just getting really, I'm, I'm never going to win this game again because of this, these dies I'm getting here in this video. Uh, I started out minus two, but because of the die roll, I'm now plus two. So if I go over to check, I'm going to win 12 games against the Chicago team. So 12 brings us to 40. Three series is in. I have 40 wins. I feel pretty good about that. And I'm wondering, I'm sorry, give me a, I wonder if I, six, seven, okay, no. I didn't, I played them, I played Philadelphia, I'm just wondering if I, I'm, I'm missing a card here, maybe I put it in the, oh well, I'm going to keep going. Uh, this I'm, I'm going to blame it on playing with with one hand trying to camera this. So uh, <laughs> my my next series is going to be against Boston, and Boston is a three. So what has what has happened here? Oh, I think I figured it out. Uh, did I put that card there? No, I'm not going to be able to let it go in my head. Like, I, I put a card somewhere, and, oh, well, I'll find it. Off we go. Uh, Boston is a three, I'm a six. So this is going to be an interesting time for us to do some in-season stadium financing. So I can take the following number of stadium actions immediately based on my front office level. My front office is a two so i can do one stadium action so what a stadium action is a stadium action is either investing in technology to build better tiles or to actually build a tile 
if I was going to, if I'm going to invest, all that means is I take this and I flip it over. It's out of the game. I think the rules might say put it back in the box. I, I flip them over because then putting them away is easy. Uh, but what I'm going to do is I'm going to spend some money and I'm going to upgrade my field. So I'm going to take this and I'm going to build it. Now the cost is $10. I don't have $10. What I do have are two media tokens. At any time, I can cash in my media tokens for $5. So that media influence allowed me to build my stadium. The little hammer icon means build. And now permanently, I have an extra team quality bump. So I'm going to go from six to seven. Um, I probably should have thought about doing that earlier in the year, but because I was just kind of going through cards here. Uh, so now what we'll do is we'll, so Boston would have played a card if it was a human player. Uh, they are not. So now we will roll our dice. Boston is a three, I'm a seven, so I'm naturally plus four. I'm the blue, it was bound to happen. The dice you know, said enough of that. So instead of being plus four, I'm plus three. I'm three stronger. And if I look at my records, that's gonna give me 13 wins. So 40 plus 13 is gonna give me 53. So there we are, 53 after that series we have three series to go and that's what that's where my confusion is i should only have three cards here so watch this we'll do something here to kind of fix things one i'm just going to take the first card away not sure why i well you know what i think i played this if against opponent gain one tq so i'm going to take that out of there we'll keep this here Okay, so three series is left, three cards. That's the way it should be. And if I if I made a rules goof, uh, I apologize. Totally my fault. I will blame the camera, though. Uh, we have three series is left, and our next series is going to be against the team from Cleveland. The team from Cleveland has a TQ of six. We have a TQ of one. So, hmm... Oh, oh my goodness. So look at this. So had I been looking at the cards, this is an interesting combo I could have done. This card says gain one fan, gain an additional fan if I have a level two or higher concession tile in my stadium. So the last round when I bought the field, if I had purchased a concession stand instead, I could have gotten an additional fan with the short lines card. But as it is, I'm just gonna get one fan. That's okay for what we're doing. And now we go to the dice. We'll say Cleveland is red. I am blue. My overall strength is seven plus six. That's going to be 13. Cleveland is six plus three, which is nine. So I have a natural advantage of four. And based on that, I'm going to win 13 more games. So 13, 14, 15, 16 takes me to 66. With two more series to go, with, with a team at the beginning of the season, with a TQ of six for most of it, I think I'm doing fairly well. I'm not sure I'm going to make it to the the goal of beating Washington, but I mean, stranger things have happened, I guess. And, and this might be a, an indicator right here: the New York versus Washington series. This will be the big one. And I was saving this card for that. This, this is a card that I would use against a team I consider to be strong. Uh, I'm going to gain a, t a team quality for this series. Again, this series only. But I'm going to get to roll an extra resolution die. And I'm going to show you what that looks like. Uh, and th this is a really cool example of, of how that works. So I'm going to be the, the two blue dies. I think that's blue. Whatever. And, and Washington will be red. Washington is a nine, I'm a seven, so Washington is better, better by two. Now, this is, these, these are my dice. Washington gets a four, no matter what. I don't add these together. I just get to pick which one I want. I want the five. So, Washington is naturally a 13. I am going to be a 12. They beat me by one, but it could have been a lot worse. I'm going to... 
I'm going to look at this. Since they were better than me, they're going to get 12. But I'm going to get 10, and I'm going to go from 66 to 76. I have a really, I have a real shot here. I, I really do, which is really awesome. Um, all depends on how well I play against St. Louis. And St. Louis has a chance to play spoiler. They're a strong team. They have a TQ of 7. I have a TQ of 7. So really, it could boil down to what cards that we play, or really what's going to happen is it's going to be the dice. Uh, before that, I'm going to get some fans. I'm going to roll two dice and add my front office total. My front office is a two. I'm going to roll. We'll roll two of the, the dice the game came with. See how these roll. So seven plus two is nine. I'm going to get to add myself two fans. I like that. So let's get two fans. The fans are excited in New York because we're in a pennant race. We're, we're right there. And what we do against St. Louis is going to go a long way as to decide the pennant. Um, we're tied. We're both seven. So it's really down to this die roll. I'll be blue. St. Louis will be black. <laughs> and we tie there, which is a situation. Uh, there is no such thing as, you know, you have to play games. And if we're even across the board, we'll be 11 and 11. 76 plus 11, 76 is 86, 87. Look at that. Amazing. One win more than Washington. If, 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 if we had a situation where we tied, if, if we were both on the same line, the player still wins. The player wins in, uh, in a tie. But e either way, hey, the New York team has won the pennant in the Federal League, and there was much rejoicing by all of the fans. So we track our wins. We're through the regular season. Now, because a human player, which just happened to be me, because the human player won the pennant, we move on to the postseason. If we were playing a four-player game and none of the human players eclipsed the strongest non-player team, we just skip this part. But this will be exciting. We can see what's going on. We're going to draw one championship card. Our championship deck is over here. So we're going to draw this card right here. And what do we have? We have a very, very strong Continental team. Their team quality is 17. Uh, had I purchased a series card at the beginning of the season, I could play it, but I, I don't have one. So I, I really did not expect to win the pennant. It was a pleasant surprise. Uh, so really, we're playing with house money. Uh, it's, it's a seven-game series, and I'm going to roll dice. I'm going to win a game if I roll a five or a six. So the first two games, I'm down 0-2. And oop, I can't. It's three to one now, because I got a six. I I need a, a pair of fives here. Didn't get it. So I, I lost the series in five games. Not shocking. Um, but there, there's no penalty for losing. There is a bonus, a, a victory point bonus, if you win the World Series. But I I won't lose anything by losing the World Series, even if I got swept. Okay, so now we're going to move on to finances, and this is going to be on the back side of our, our player aid. Uh, the income formula, everybody's going to start with a base of $80, so I'm just going to move my money up to 80 That's my base. Everybody gets the same amount. I'm going to get $3 for every fan. I have four fans on the board. That's going to be 12 more dollars. So I'm up to 98. Then I, I, I can return media whenever I want. And I might consider, uh, where's the, there we go. <coughs> I might consider spending some of the media when I get down here to my expenses. We'll see. Uh, but as it is right now, I'm just going to hold on to it. And then the question mark is stadium. How much money do I get in my stadium? Well, Every little icon that has a money bag, our, our money icon symbol, right? That is the income symbol. I'm going to get 
just based on my level one bleacher and level one concessions. So I have $108 on my money tracker. That's all my money. Now I have to spend money because, well, these guys aren't playing for free, right? So my expenses, every, every star player gets paid based on the reverse side. I have two superstars. That's gonna cost me $20. So I go down from 100 to 80. Every regular is gonna get $2. I have four regulars, that's $8. $1 for every prospect. So back in spring training, when I added these two prospects, I, I really did it thinking that I might draw a card that lets me manipulate them, like maybe trade one of them for some money or, or whatever. That wasn't the case, so those are gonna cost me 12 extra dollars. Uh, so 80 minus 12 is gonna take me down to 68. So I have $68 left. And then I have to pay my front office, my farm system, and my manager. And those costs are printed underneath. 8 plus 11 is 19, plus 6 is 25. So I'm down to $43. That's all my expenses. And I kept all of that media. It's a good time. That's it, those, those are all my expenses. So we've paid, well, we've collected our income, we've paid our expenses. Now we get to score victory points. Okay, so how victory points are scored, also on the back. Um, we're gonna get victory points based on wins. So we have to look at the chart below. We won 86 games. 86 games is gonna be worth five victory points. So we're gonna move our victory point marker to five. Did I win a championship? No. Had I, had I won the championship, I would have won, uh, I, would, I would have gotten another point. Uh, I can invest. The investment cost in season one, if I wanna spend $30, I can get another victory point. Um, I, I told you I was playing this, I'm playing the long game, and $30 for me right now I want to invest in my stadium and potentially now that, that I have, you know, some prospects, maybe I can move them into building my regulars up a little bit. So I would pass on the investment cost. But as you see, if you're playing a five or a seven year game, the cost to invest goes from 30 to 50. So something to think about if you want to get in on the victory points early. And then the last part of victory points, I would get one victory point for every five prospects. One of the reasons why I wanted to you know, make sure I had some prospects to play around with was I knew I was gonna get two points for my prospects. That is the victory point scoring phase. Uh, from here, we're gonna, we would adjust our fans, and I'm gonna be quite honest with you, in a single player game, uh, I think th there's probably something something written in the rules that I'm embarrassed. I can't think of it on top of my head uh, about the fan adjustment. In a multiplayer game, where you are in the victory point track will affect your fans moving up or down. Also, where you are on the fan track will make it go up or down. Don't look at the fan track as the number of fans that actually like you. That is more of their expectation of you. The, the more points you have, the more they expect of you. So they're, they're harder to please. Think of it that way. So uh, I'm not gonna adjust my fans, but that's what you would do in, in a multiplayer game. Next up is retirement. So the way retirement works is in reverse wins order, we're gonna draw some retirement tokens. Now, I have I have a bag. This is this is not in the game. This is this is my little. I forget where I use that, but um, in in a multiplayer game, you're going to draw tiles plus one. So with one player, I would draw two tiles, and then in win order, in reverse win order, you get to choose them. Whoever has the most wins 
gets stuck with whatever is left over. And it's not secret. You can look at them. Uh, it just so happens that, you know, my, oh, uh, this is rough. What, what's nice is I got a nun. So that, that's a freebie. But then my farm system, man, my farm system is, is already weak. But I, I lose... I lose a bump there. So uh, that is part of the, the, the mechanic to stop a runaway leader is they have to deal with more of their their fan uh, their their team dissipating by retiring, but um, that's just the way it is. Uh, nor in a multiplayer game, it's it's gonna be very rare that the nun gets back to the leader. Uh, I'll give you some examples of some of else what's in there. You can get a get a look. We can lose, um, who's this? Your front office level can go down. Your manager can retire. Your manager and a regular player. Uh, you can lose stars. You can lose, oh, there's another nun. I'm not sure how many nuns are in the bag. So this guy, our front office, two regulars going away. Regular and a prospect. So any any kind of player that's part of the the team, they're subject to retirement. There is a card in the series deck that allows you to skip a retirement. So that that's kind of nice, and you can hold on to that for the the whole game. So if you ever win a pennant and you draw two retirements, it's nice that hey, I I can negate at least one of them. That's helpful. All right. So after retirement. Uh, we go to the hot stove, and this is the last phase of the game. And what's going to happen first is whoever is in last place is going to draw two of the hot stove cards, and they're going to choose a community event. Since nobody's in last place, and I don't know a better way to do it, we're going to say this is even, this is odd. Even odd, so we have an even. We're going to take this as our event. And what this says is all around talent increases, remove the smallest NPT from the game. Okay, so the smallest NPT right now is Boston. They were a three, they're out. And we will never use, I'm sorry, bump this pile. We're never gonna use that tile again. Just what the event says. Okay, from here, Everybody's going to draw cards, and the hot stove is very similar to spring training uh, in terms of how you're going to collect cards. The minimum you're going to get is three. My front office is a two, so I'm going to get three cards. But one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to deal myself five cards because I'm going to spend two media tokens, and that, that allows me to build up my, my hot stove cards. Strategically, when I'm playing with, with people, I, I will almost force them to at least spend one media because of the options that are on these cards. So let's look at those. Uh, when we play the events, we are no longer worried about the events. Like, that might as well not even be there. These are what we're looking at. And... We can do trades, hire a manager, do stadium actions, the option, and then down here, media. I can trade this card for one media. So what I tell people is you might as well burn one of the medias because the worst that's going to happen is you're just going to replace it. But maybe you get something else that's really cool. So let's, let's explore and then we'll talk about what each of these mean here. Uh, the trade is obvious. A for B, or give B and get A. That's just like any other trade. The manager roles, if your manager retired, you have to hire a new one. If I don't like my manager, let's say my, my manager's a three, he's very average, I can fire him and just try to get another one. The number of roles I get is placed on the card. So this one would give me one roll, but this card would give me two. This card gives me three. So I might say I, I'm on a new manager. The, the chart is on the board. 
So you would roll two dice, whatever you whatever you have. That's what you get. And and there's there's no push your luck element to it. So where it says three rolls, you can take all three rolls and then choose the first roll. So if I rolled a nine, I can try to get an 11 or 12 without risking, oh man, if I get a, a three, I'm going to have a level one manager. It's not like that. It's the highest roll of the three. The option, this is how you're going to improve your team levels. You pay $8 and you either gain plus one to your farm system or your front office based on what the card says. The other option that you might see is to drop a front office or drop a farm system level and gain victory points. That option is generally more popular in the last year or the second to last year. If we were in, we're in year one of a seven year game, I, I don't wanna drop my front office. I wanna spend money to build it up because if I get my front office to a level four or a level five, my farm system to a level four or level five, I'm getting more cards. Oh, that's, that's actually on the board here, so check this out. So during the hot stove, if I have a level four, I draw an extra card. Level five, I draw two extra cards. Same thing here in spring training. So the more the the higher these ratings, the more cards you get, the more media you can save. So that's one reason why early on you might want to spend money to push that forward. And as a matter of fact, I had a farm system retire, so I'm going to do that. I'm going to spend eight dollars on this card. Spend eight dollars. So forty three goes down to thirty five, and I'm going to bump my farm system back up to to a two hoping that later on maybe I can bump it up some more. Um, you know what? Maybe I do this. Pay $8 to go up another one. So, mm, I'm down to 27. And now my, front off, my farm system is at a three. So with these two cards, I use the option. Um, next up, I'll show you stadium actions. So stadium actions, I have two. Well, the stadium action, again, is to either invest by digging down into the pile or by buying. So I have two stadium actions, a flip and a buy or two flips. All right, I can buy two things. I have $27 and I have, I have a lot of media influence here. So... What what I will do, I will build I'll build a, a press box and a concession stand. It's gonna cost me thirty dollars. So there's twenty and I'm gonna burn two media for the other ten. And I'll build the first press box, which cost me twenty, and I'll build a concession stand. We'll put the concessions down here, that cost me ten. So what does that do? During the next income phase, there's the income icon. This press box is going to give me one media. This concession stand is going to give me $5. As you dig down, however, then you start to see some, some scoring options. So the level eight press box is worth five victory points at the end of the game. The level seven, if it's active, during the scoring phase, I can trade one media for one victory point. And only one. If I have 12, however many media I have over here, I can still only trade one in. But as we dig down, there are some interesting combos that you can shoot for. So the concession stand, I'm going to get a victory point for every two bleachers if I build this level 7 concession. I need to have bleachers. So th those kind of combinations are out there for you to to check out and, and have fun with and experiment with. Uh, but so I, I did my two stadium actions as two builds. This, well, I'll tell you what, I, hmm. I will, I'll, I'll show you what the manager looks like. Just go, what the heck, right? Because 
I would never do this, I think, in this situation with a level three, but let's say my manager retired. He's, I get two roles here. So my manager, even though he won the pennant, he didn't win the World Series, so we're going to get rid of him. And I rolled a four, which is not good. And I get one more roll. There we go. That's an 11. That's outstanding. So on my chart, it's a level five manager. So now my, my team is going to be significantly stronger next year, despite not having, you know, stars or regulars. I, I've somehow found a way. And for this... I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just, I'm gonna take three media for this. I'm, I'm sorry about the blurry, and the and the glare. It's just where I am. So three media cubes or three media influence. One, two, three, and we'll put that with uh, the rest of our stuff, and and that's my spring training phase. So once everyone goes through. Uh, all of those steps, that's a, year, that's a full year of Lords of Baseball. And that's, that's a full year. I missed one, one aspect. Of the, the very last thing that we, that we have to check at the end of our hot stove phase is who won the season bonus. And for us, it was the highest field level. And it's one of the reasons why during the regular season I built up my field as well because I knew this was something that we were going to score points for. So what this says is if you currently have or are tied for the most VPs, you gain one point. If you currently have neither the most nor the least, so if you're tied, or if you're in like in the middle, if you're second or third in a four-player game, you would score two. And if you are, if you currently have or are tied for the least, you would score three. So in a one-player game... Uh, I have the most, so I would score a point. So after one year, in 1911, the New York team was able to score eight victory points, which is, is a, I think it's a pretty good, pretty good first year, I think. Um, but that is just a, a look at the 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 solo version in a in a full eight player game. You don't worry about. You don't worry about the non-player team. This is back and forth. So we have the Continental and the Federal League, uh, which is a nod to you know, a two-league system, right? Uh, we, we, we didn't use actual names for, for obvious reasons. Uh, but if you're playing with four or five or six players, you only need a handful of the, the team quality tokens. And some, some of them get pretty nasty, like, I have, I, I have nightmares about about this guy, the TQ nineteen, and and what they do to you. But the the nice thing you have to look at it as they're attacking all the players at the same rate. So, you know, if I have to play Pittsburgh as a TQ nineteen, well, so does the guy across the table from me. So, that's that's that, right? Um, I, I hope you enjoyed this this look. I know it was long. I, I tend to I tend to talk. That's just that's just me, I guess. Um, if you have any questions or you know you're interested in in learning more because <laughs> I didn't hit something, maybe uh, uh, drop a comment, drop me an email, uh, follow us. You know, I'm I'm happy to talk and answer any questions you have about, you know, where, maybe where our mind was when we came up with a certain rule or, you know, why something happened. But uh, I want to thank, thank all our backers and all the people that made this, this game um, a reality right now. So uh, uh, that's, that's that. And I want to thank you for hanging in and, and watching with us. So uh, until next time, this is Max for Lords of Baseball.